Heidi Hollis, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Heidi, for the audience, tell us who the Shadow People are, and specifically the Hat Man. Oh, boy. It's a, it's a big topic, let me tell you. So um, when it comes to Shadow People, this is a term that I'd come up with way back in, oh, my gosh, it's probably 94, 95, 1995, 94. Um, it's crazy. It's like I, I never thought that a phenomenon that I, I coined the term to and, and defined would go to this extent. Um, it was a phenomenon that I personally uh, I had witnessed the first time that I clearly recall was in 1990. And I called it, oh, you know, it must have been 1991 that I first started calling it the shadow people because I had no idea what I was dealing with. And I got tired of describing to people what it was I was seeing. So I just called them shadow people. So what they are are these black masses that could take on different forms. Um, the most common form that I personally was seeing was something that looked like uh, a kind of like a hulky man with its head directly connected to its shoulders. Um, it was solid black and sometimes would have glowing red eyes. Uh, I didn't see distinguishable legs, um, but and I didn't see arms to the sides or anything. It just seemed to be this thing. And um, I also witnessed them as something uh, that I call shadow spiders. So I, these things just seemed to morph into all sorts of things. I saw shadow cats, shadow clouds, shadow streaks. And I had just placed these things all together and, um, and their menacing nature and, and the things that they like to do uh, to myself and uh, college roommates and, and stuff. Um, I had no idea that it was anything outside of the scope of what it was I was experiencing that others were, were going through. Um, but I learned these things to be quite negative in their approach. Um, and, and then there came along this thing called, uh, I initially called him Hat Man Shadow. I didn't personally see him. I, <laughs> I had a college roommate one night. In the middle of the night, I heard what, like one of those death screams you hear from the movies. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, somebody's killing my roommate. I jump up. I go running to her room. And, man, I, I can't even tell you how she was. She shrunk herself to one corner of the room in utter shock, unable to speak, just just cowering in the corner. And I, I flicked the light. I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And she's just pointing, shaking her hand. And she's like, the man, the man. And I'm like, what man? I'm like, oh, my God. She had a door that went to the outside. And I'm like, oh, my God, somebody broke in. I checked the door. Oh, the door's locked. I'm like, I'm like, what man? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I'm looking around, checking the windows. And if finally, when she was able to speak, she goes, he disappeared when you came in. And she happened to be a really great artist. And uh, she drew that first image of hat man that everybody's abusing the copyright worldwide um <laughs> the hat man and uh, it was a guy that wears his gaucho uh, hat uh with a three-piece suit he has a, a a watch on his hip a chain watch uh trench coat sometimes he wears a top hat uh, sometimes he wears a cape uh sometimes he wears no hat at all but um one thing that I thought was strange, because she kind of described him as being this this dark, shadowy thing that kind of stepped out from the shadows, and he was solid. Like, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't um, uh, like the shadowy things that you see that uh, would kind of disappear, dissipate into the wall type of thing. So, and I'm like, wow, these shadow people are really getting advanced. My gosh. So, when I first presented him to the world, and I was hesitant to to put him out there only for the, the mere uh, fact that every time I try to approach the topic, friends and family would be like, Heidi, what are you working on? I'm like, why? It's like, I can't sleep. I'm starting to see things. It's like, can you please just stop? I really need to study. You know, I'm like, geez, you know, like I couldn't even touch the subject. So um, but when I finally did bring it up <clears throat> and had introduced him as a hat man shadow, it's just another form that shadow people took. Um, I was I did that for a couple of years, but I I saw a distinctive pattern that let me know, oh, my gosh, this guy is different. Um, he just he deserved his own title. As, and I just started calling him the hat man because 
the things that he was able to do, and he was usually the only one in the room, uh, but sometimes he would have these shadow beings that he would kind of be directing and be in charge of. And, and it almost seemed like they were his minions. And and for him to be able to, he's wearing clothing for crying out loud. He's not morphing. Yes, he could have, uh, sometimes he could have glowing red eyes. If you see his skin, his eyes are usually solid black. He could be clean shaven, have a goatee. He'll change it up sometimes. But um <clears throat> He's very, very, uh, very, very evil. I, 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 and if he, and he talks, that's the other big difference. He talks. <laughs> he will tell you who he is if you ask. Sometimes. Whereas none of the other shadowy figures speak. I, you know, I've heard people claim that they'll growl, they'll whisper, um, they'll put thoughts into people's heads, but they're not like him. He is. He wants to be recognized. He he would change it up otherwise, where you couldn't recognize him. He wants to be recognized, but he's wearing a disguise. Ah, not necessarily. He, he's he wants people to know who he is when he's coming in the door. Shadow people, they'll try to they'll try to scurry away or come in the middle of the night and hide in the shadows and sneak up on you. He'll walk straight into your face and just say, "Yeah, get a good look, buddy." <laughs> not always, but yeah, he'll walk in broad daylight. He, he's uh, and smile the nastiest grin, something like the equivalent of it, the clown the <laughs> from the movie. He's horrific, and he does things that you just wouldn't think are possible. Uh, he, <laughs> he likes to punch his fist into people's chests and pull their souls out, kicking and screaming and saying, "Now you're mine." So, yeah, he's a bit different, a bit stronger. So, yeah, to call him a mere shadow. No. You have not seen The Hat Man. I have now. <laughs> Just before I put out my book on him, The Hat Man, and I had been covering him for a long time. Um, he never came my way. Um, I felt that he was around, but he never came at me. So I'd say I was about a month from putting the book out that was just dedicated to him, though I'd been talking about him for years. <laughs> and uh, so... I was in my room, and I, whenever something is around me, good or bad, I, I'll wake up, and I heard the steps outside my door, and I was like, there's nobody there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great, and I just recognized. I'm like, it's him, and he it was standing outside the, the over the threshold, and I was just like, you know, curiosity killed the cat type of thing, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, I've never seen this freaking bastard. Oh, he's going to dare to come in here? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I know if I look at him. I mean, you, you do get some kind of respectful fear. It, it, you can't help but to do that. But I'm not a type of person that jumps and uh, whatnot. So I sat there and I kept my eyes closed. And he's, I, could, I could hear him standing right there. Then he stepped over the threshold. I'm like, oh, he's being bold. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to just sit, sit here and I'm going to see what he's going to try to do. And he sat on my bed, and uh, and I was just like, I'm not going to look. I am not going to look. And and as if he, you know, he knows I'm not opening my eyes to look at him because I don't want to. I don't want to be afraid. And he sprawled out across my bed, <laughs> and I'm like, All right, this freaking Yahoo's going to sit around till I look at him. I'm like, All right, I'm not going to do this. And I'm like, Let me just get rid of him real quick. And I go to say the name of Jesus to get him out. He hates that name. Gee, I wonder why. Um, <laughs> I go to say it, and oh, my goodness, I had waited too long, apparently. I, my mouth felt like a, a, a bunch of peanut butter was suddenly in it. And I was like, Mwah. I was like, oh, no. And, but I got the name out, and poof, he was gone. But um, now it gets, it gets uh, interesting because – Right, oh gosh, I think it was like two weeks or so. I was about to put the book out on him. <clears throat> and I, I practice as an occupational therapist. So I had gone to this facility. I work at different facilities around Chicago. And, um, <laughs> and there, there aren't any therapists I know that, that practice, uh, that, that speak of demons and whatnot. Um, just making my parents proud, you know? Um, <laughs> So these therapists, physical therapists, uh, they're, you know, 
asking me some questions like, oh, hey, you know, I heard that you write about this stuff. What is it about? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, OK. Um, and I, I was like, I, I told them briefly one of them had to leave and the other brought a patient down to walk in the parallel bars. And and around the parallel bars are a bunch of mirrors so the patient could see themselves walking. After they brought them down, this patient started pointing at the mirror and um, the therapist comes running for me. Come here. What we were just talking about. Oh, my God. I'm like, what are you talking about? I go to where the patient is and the patient's like putting his ear to the mirror going, who is that guy trying to talk to me in a different language? I don't get it. And I looked. I'm looking around. I'm like, I don't see anything. And he's like, don't act like I'm crazy. Who is that guy? And I was like, oh, shoot. I said, where, where is he exactly? He's like, he's right behind you. And he's looking at the mirror, you know, and I see myself. And I'm like, I leaned over and I said, sir, is he wearing a suit and a hat? He goes, I knew you could see him. See, he's right there. And he's like, it was so disturbing. I, I don't even know how to tell you. But um, that patient went upstairs because he was just so freaked out. Next day. I was at the same facility and the therapists were talking about it when I came in. They're like, oh, dang, I wish I was here to have seen that. And I said, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. I left the room for about 10 minutes, came back, and he, he came back. My hat man did. So it let me know he's, he's very close and listening. So, um, But to witness him with my own eyes, now that was witnessing his presence in, in, um, in different ways, okay, <laughs> But I had, you know how you just have a, a typical dream. And he comes in dreams, okay? Uh, and it's just as real as anything else. You know, you or, you or I just, you know, just uh, like, I don't even know how you say it. Those, uh, I call them waking dreams where it's just so real, it's hard to believe it didn't take place. So I'm having a conversation in my dream. And all of a sudden, Hat Man pops up between myself and this person I'm having a conversation with, as soon as I saw him, I grabbed his hat <laughs> and I shoved it in his face <laughs> and I pushed him down to the ground and I said, I don't like you and I never will. And he just went into a black puddle. It, it was just the strangest thing. Um, I have seen him also cowering, uh, like bending, having his knees pulled up to his chest almost up in the corner of the ceiling. Uh, that was just last summer. Um, so I've seen him, I've seen him a couple of times now with my own eyes and in the dream sense. But you know what was really disturbing um, to myself? It's about two weeks after I, and he, he's so personal, so personal. He hates my guts. Feelings are mutual. But um, two weeks after I put that book out, you heard of the Slender Man with the little girls uh, that attacked their one friend. So that happened about a 15 minute drive from my family's home. So I took that rather personal. I I don't know if people know the full story that um, one of the little girls who attacked the third girl had convinced the other attacking girl. Um, she's like, you know, Slender Man is this guy. And she goes, oh. I know he's real because I seen him when I was little. I'm like, oh, my God. She was convinced because she had seen the hat man. And that hat man is, <laughs> if the slender man wasn't based off hat man, then <laughs> I don't know what to say. And I learned that uh, this Eric Knudsen guy that uh, had supposedly developed slender man, that he based it off from a uh, hat man and the uh, shadow spider sighting so he he combined the tentacles of the shadow spider to and with the hat man i mean he's tall he likes to prey on children and he's got tentacles around him I'm like okay yeah that's hat man in a suit a black suit <laughs> like and hat man is uh he could be anywhere from six foot to over 12 feet tall i've had some people so when he comes in your room he's he's bent over I mean, it's just insane how huge he can be sometimes. So, um, yeah, so good times with the rotten, low-down, good-for-nothing hat man. What do you think lies beneath the hat and cloak? What could be the true image of the hat man? Well, that's uh, that's the interesting part of 
this phenomena that's more recently going on that is just highly disturbing to me. But um, he, when he reveals himself, when he talks uh, and he'll say who he is, he'll, he'll call himself Scratch sometimes. And that's an old Norse term for the devil. Um, I think that uh, <laughs> I think he's he's evil incarnate. I think he he will take the he'll he'll stake the claim of being the devil or Satan himself. Um, and he's looking for people to work for him. So to say, if you take his hat or his cloak off from him, you know, is there going to be a man standing there? I don't know, but I do know that he is, uh, he is not looking to back down anytime soon. He's, he's upping his ante. He is, he's really active as of late. And, you know, nine times out of 10, when I go into a room and people are like, oh, that's the girl that writes about that stuff. And I'm like, I said, you know, who of you guys here have uh, seen a ghost? I say ghost. And usually the ones that raise their hand, it's all hat man. It is that common. It is that common. And and the look and the shock, I've had many friends and family members near me. It's just like, oh, tell me about your ghost encounter. Oh, how'd you know I had one? Oh, I don't know. Just tell me. <laughs> they describe the hat man to the T, right? And I'm sitting there going, hmm. And I, I'll pull up my book cover. Did it look like this? And they're like, oh. I mean, it is that common. Like some people have, have told me, well, Heidi, maybe you're just and making people think they saw it because you put the image out there. I'm like, no, it's the opposite. People are Googling ghost with a hat and hat man pops up, you know, and, and like once a week, I probably still get somebody saying, gosh, I thought it was the only one. Is there any particular smell associated with the hat man? Some people have said that he sometimes smokes a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people have have. Uh claimed that as well but not not a not a ton i don't get a ton of that uh sometimes they might smell rotten eggs you know a little sulfur smell um dank basement like smell um but not always did you experience this no i didn't experience the smell with with him showing up when i'd seen him no um i experienced the sulfur smell and that's like I, wow, that's really amazing to me. I mean, I, I'm sitting there writing on my computer, and I'm just overwhelmed with stink. Like, oh, my nose hairs are, are burning. I'm like, where is this coming from? Just, like, so powerful. And, you know, last for a, a couple minutes, I'm looking around. I'm like, did I step in something, you know? And then, poof, it is gone without a trace. Like, that is really a crazy phenomenon to experience. How old is this phenomenon? Well, this goes back centuries now. Um, my gosh, it, it's it's been around for for some time. Uh, I'd come across stories. Um, my gosh, oh, it's like the 1700s and witches talking about a man on a black horse <laughs> riding through while they're doing their their incantations and uh, chanting and uh, occult practices and and stuff and. So he has, he has, uh, he's been around and, you know, I can't help but to think that like the, the rumors of Sleepy Hollow, it, it's like that, what people have just described to me. I've had a couple of people who have seen him on a horse, on a black horse with a cape and all running, you know, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, so it, it, his, uh, his presence, when you think about evil presence in the world or in biblical times, I mean, this is something that has always kind of been a part of our culture. So um, to say that we could definitely put our finger on where it began, I, I don't think so. And um, I have always, you know, this is something that uh, a lot of people don't know. But from the start, I always associated this phenomena with the alien phenomena. That's where I came to it from. Um I was somebody who was raised in a haunted house, mind you. So I have seen ghosts. I have dealt with those things. But then I also had uh, witnessed several UFOs. Um, I was not abducted that I know of. Everybody likes to try to throw in that in that category. But I'm like, let me allow me to have my own experiences and memories, please. <laughs> you know, I have seen aliens, <laughs> um, but. I was able to move. Uh, I was always able to kind of break out of these 
scenarios where something comes around and I'm like, uh, I don't know, able to react, to respond, <clears throat> to get out of situations. But um, so I came at it from that angle. Um, I was uh, myself and my college roommate. We shared this apartment and we'd see things that, that were kind of transparent, but we could we could see it to a certain extent. And uh, she was an artist uh, that was just extraordinary. Like a lot of the images that people have been yanking off my website, uh, she did those. And uh, but I'm a cartoonist, and so I would see these things, and I'd I'd be drawing what I'm seeing, and I'd look over, and here she is drawing like this full embodied thing, and I'm like, and they kind of coincided what we're able to see together, but. She could see a lot more detail. <clears throat> so, um, but she was very religious. So she was Pentecostal, overly um, so, where she categorized anything and everything that didn't reflect directly from the Bible as being just outright evil. You know, I don't want anything to do with it. Um, and I had belonged to a UFO uh, alien group, and I was just uh, somebody that had seen UFOs. Everybody else in there was an alien abductee. Or where they held these meetings, uh, it wasn't too far from where I lived. And so sometimes I have these people come over and they get hypnotically regressed. And uh, and she just totally pulled herself away from it. But so she just didn't didn't have anything to do with it. She was like all my other friends who <clears throat> only spoke of these things if they were making fun of it. So <laughs> I was like, OK, you know, I'm used to this now. Um, but then one day she had an extraordinary experience where driving through downtown uh, Milwaukee is where I'm originally from. And um, during broad daylight, this being jumped on the hood of her car that I'd never heard of before, a sparkly gelatinous looking like thing, jumped on the hood of her car and shoved its head through her windshield. And her being <laughs> the Pentecostal person I knew her to be. I'm thinking, my God, how'd this happen? And, you know, how did she, like, she put her guard down almost to, she said it had a really calming effect to it. And uh, it started communicating with her. And um, she said, Heidi, it was really strange when I went to, uh, I asked it a question. It used my, like, my mouth went numb and it started slapping up and down and it used my mouth to, answer me she said it was so bizarre but um it was it was not the kind of experience that uh that you might think because she called me in an absolute panic <laughs> she's like oh my god Heidi I don't know what's going on she's crying hysterically I'm like oh my god so <laughs> it was later on where uh we went and sat in my car and we're, te we're talking about what took place and uh that's when she was telling me about this and out of nowhere while, while we're talking about this she and she's uh, had a very thick accent, so um, it, it was weird. We're sitting there talking, and, and she's like, oh, Heidi, this has just been so overwhelming. She's like, you know, I feel like I really need to meditate. And I'm like, meditate? I'm like, I didn't know this is something she did. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, what do you want me to leave you alone in the car? I'm like, what do you meditate? <laughs> she closed her eyes for a second, and all of a sudden she says with her uh, reduced accent, um, and she goes, hello, I've been waiting to speak to you for a very long time. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay. I said, uh, is this Samantha? Said, oh, no, this is not Samantha. I'm like, okay. I'm like, um, so <laughs> who's speaking? You know, I'm like, what is she doing? You know, this is, this is a lady who won't speak about anything. And uh, long story short, this this voice is telling me he is a contact and he is not from here. She's, he's from a, um, he's in a UFO. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, you know, I'm like trying to calm myself down. I'm like, I'm not going to jump out of the car. I had witnessed people who had been hypnotically regressed before. And, uh, sometimes from the opposite side, you, you think they're going to tell you their story when, a being that took them, that abducted them, starts telling the story from their perspective. It's, and, and people call it channeling or whatever, um, but it, it's it really was not. It was really something I'd never, I'd never really fully understood. But um, so this being is saying he's in a ship, and I'm like, I'm trying to pull my words together. I'm like, okay, well, where's your ship? You know, and 
uh, it's like, oh, I'm uh, pretty high up, but I can't bring my ship down anymore because your your government is able to shoot us down now. I'm like, oh, and it's like, oh, but I think I could project an image of myself. And holy smokes, <laughs> Russell, he he projected an image of himself in between us in the seat. And uh, I mean, I can't even tell you, I almost fell out the door because I was just like, OK, 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 I see something. And and this uh, it was very out of focus. It was kind of a fuzzy, uh, fleshy, pinkish colored being um, that uh, I'm sitting here like moving my hands around to describe. He was he was small. I don't know. He's maybe three and a half feet and sitting in the seat. It was just uh, wild. Um, so. Long story short, <laughs> that convinced me what was going on was was real. Um, and later on, um, you know, afterwards, my friend comes for I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's like, I know, I know, I know. I'm like, what's happening here? And um, so here, here's, you know, we get back to our place and here's somebody who doesn't like to read English much. And she's trying to read several of these books on aliens that I had. And she's calling my friends from the, the UFO group and like, what on earth? What is this? And I'm like, wow, this is a person who thought we we're all worshiping demons, you know, <laughs> suddenly asking questions. So we may time out many times like okay let's see if you could do this again you know oh my god it was an alien okay yeah yeah so um she was able to reach out on many occasions and um so i'm sitting there i'm ready to write stuff down i'm asking all these questions like so where are you from you know and uh this being it was a trip the being didn't have much to say it's like well, if I told you where I was from, it would make no sense to you because you don't know where that is. You know, like everything was blocked. And I'm like, well, this is really senseless. It's like you're looking into the eyes of the universe and, and you're trying to think of all these questions. And he's just like, it would not benefit for you to know that. That's what we heard constantly. And then I brought up something related to the shadow people and this being like it's like we had to know the right questions to ask i mean this went on for some time and that's when this being started just filling our ears like you call them shadow people we call them shadows this is not the first planet they have done this to the beings that are abducting and abusing people they are conquered beings their planets were conquered not all of them but the ones visiting you are and they are the ones whose strings are being pulled by these shadow people this hat man and i was just stunned you know people are like where did you get this information about shadow people i'm like it wasn't me <laughs> it wasn't me i'm like you look i'm just uh you know, I, I didn't make this stuff up. I I did my best in putting word out there. And, oh, my gosh, it's now known worldwide. Little did I know. And the interesting part, I wasn't allowed to write, record, or anything while this being was talking because he said, uh, here I was a college student. I was busy. I had a very difficult uh, uh, study program. I mean, it's like you're becoming a physician. It was not easy. And and this being tells me to write a book. I'm like, are you kidding me? I am really stressed right now, working two jobs. I can't do a book. But when he told me what these beings were doing, it took me two months in the midst of college to write that book and four years to get it published. <laughs> so it was uh, that was in 97 that I wrote that book. And uh, so a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, you didn't come up with the name. I'm like, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. And I've been doing this ever since, putting word out there on this stuff and uh, warning people how to protect themselves. Can the hat man be summoned? Oh, gosh. I, I don't even want to answer that almost because, I mean, you can summon the devil. Of course you can. Sure you can. That's him. He'll take that step anyways. He'll come at you. I wouldn't, I sure wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it's not easy to get rid of him, especially if you did the invitation because he likes to invite himself. You know, this is starting to remind me a little bit of Freddy Krueger 
Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's what it was based on, right? I did hear that, actually. I did hear that. I did. Uh, someone had told me that uh, the, uh, the person that wrote that, I don't know exactly if it was, uh, was it Clive? I don't know if he did that, if he wrote it. Clive Barker? Davis or Barker was, I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, yeah, somebody somebody told me that he, he spoke of people having nightmares of this man in a hat. So that's what he based it on. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? I mean, you think about it. It's a similar hat. He's going after kids. He loves to go after children. He likes to start there and stick with them for a lifetime sometimes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I didn't think that was a coincidence. That's for sure. And and then also think of that minister from the Poltergeist movie. Ugh. <laughs> it was Wes Craven who wrote oh, that's it. That's it, Wes Craven. I'm, I'm way off. Okay, yeah, I'm terrible with names. Yeah, so anyways. <laughs> So there are certain people the hat man targets, and you're saying children? Uh, yeah. He goes after children, but he, uh, you know, a lot of people, they're just like, what did I do wrong? Why is he after me? And I'm like, you know what? It's not always what you did wrong. It's what you may do that's good. He is able to kind of see where you're going, and he's able to see if you're gifted, in a sense, to be able to see things like him or his minions. And he likes to try to control those people, especially who have uh, the ability to see ghosts, uh, precognitive, uh, have some kind of intuition. He loves to go after people like that and have them work for him. He doesn't want those people because those are gifts from God, you know. So uh, those are warning. Uh, I think God plants these these intuitions in all of us, but I think some of us, pay attention to it more and we serve as a warning to like, Oh my God, did you see that? You know, back away. Here comes something nasty. Um, <laughs> so, and so he doesn't want that. He doesn't want those warning systems. So he definitely goes after that. He goes after the innocence of children. Um, and you know, there's that protective sense that especially in the Christian faith that I think it's up to the age of 12 or something. Uh, the the children are have this protection of innocence. Well, he's he's crossing that barrier. That rule is out the window with him. He is tapping in. Uh, I've heard of sins of the father type of thing. It's like why would this go after a five year old and do the most horrific things? And is it because the innocence of a child goes underneath their parent that the parent can literally pass this on to them? I, it's looking like that. But either way, this this uh, this being is is going after. I've had I've had people who have extraordinary memories of being in their crib as a toddler, seeing Hatman, and oh, this gives me chills. This guy wrote me and told me how he was a toddler, and he's crying his eyes out, and Hatman stuck his head into his crib. And he gave him a threat of death if he would say anything, if he would scream or anything for a toddler to get that message. He's like, I stopped crying right away because I knew if I made a peep, he was going to kill me. And my mother came wondering, my gosh, what made him stop crying? And comes into the door. Hatman had him lifted into the air. The mom saw it. Ugh, it gives me chills. Um, Hatman turned and looked at her. And mentally slammed the door in her face so hard it, it broke the door. She was kicking and, and trying to get the door open. It finally gave way. The, the frame of the door crumbled. And she found him underneath the bed, the, the baby crew. I mean, my God, what was he doing with a baby? What was he doing? What was he trying to do? I mean, I've had other instances just, just it, it, it rips my heart out. It really does. Um, so I, I, I find it to be extraordinarily important that um, people realize that this thing is not just a possibility, it's a threat. And um, I, a lot of my, I have eight books out and it's like only three of them are on these dark topics because people are like, what do I do? How do I get rid of this thing? You have got to find that face of a mustard seed in you to use the name of Jesus to call upon to get rid of this thing. And and it seems like uh, people 
<laughs> people who write me and they're just like, I'm not into that faith or religious thing, but you know, what do I do? I just saw the devil. Oh, oh, you acknowledge the devil's real. You better hope and pray the opposite is real. Otherwise, I tell people, throw a shoe at it. Because <laughs> if you don't have you don't have faith, what? So my books, I have five books on the topic of, uh, like, I have a book on Jesus encounters, angel encounters. And then I have two books that I, I'm a cartoonist. So uh, the other F word, how to find faith and laugh at yourself while trying. Because it, it's uh, being a cartoonist, I thought it would be kind of kind of a, a good idea to, to write chapters on our silly attempts at trying to get the right face, you know, and it's like, oh, I didn't go to church, so I must be damned. No, 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 <laughs> you're not damned because you don't go to church. I don't go to church. It's like, you know, it, so just kind of finding where you're at in your faith and, and find your way back and with a lot of comics and just keeping it real. Um, then I have a version for, for kids, um, the Fickle Finders uh, investigates the other F word. That's the topic of faith again. So, um, if people go to the other F word dot com or Heidi Hollis dot com, they'll find those there. And I have made my books. If you have Amazon Prime to be free. Um, yeah. So if you have Amazon Prime, you should be able to get the books uh, for free on there. And people are like, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, like, it's kind of kind of, you know, how do you put a price tag on a person's soul? You know, because this is a battle over your soul. You got to figure this stuff out because these things are placing their bets that we don't figure them out. Well, the hat man's placing some value on your soul. What would the hat man do with it? Well, a sad and, and, and crazy thing, you know, it's it's literally out of the Bible. Um, he is trying to get people to work for him, to do what he does, and people who happen to have near-death experiences who have either been alien abductees or experiencers of shadow people on a regular basis, they have these near-death experiences, and guess what's at the end of their tunnel? Hat Man or aliens uh, or both, aliens and Hat Man, side by side, they come into people's bedrooms sometimes. I mean, and then there's this Grim Reaper-looking guy that also answers to Hat Man. Um, so, People, it's it's so wild to me. People are like, oh, that's just, you know, that's science fiction. That's not real. And I'm like, what's science fiction and what doesn't seem real to people? I'm like, okay, so explain to me how you're having a good old time. You've had this good friend for 20 years. All of a sudden, boom, they're dead. Where did they go? Do so you think they just went into nothingness? It, it, we don't think of matters of the soul until we lose someone. And we're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're, we're, that's kind of a, a paranormal mystery, isn't it? It's like we if we have got to get right with understanding that this is not a permanent life. Like, we're, I don't know why we're always surprised when it happens. But my dad always says, you're not going to get out of this life alive. And it's like, OK, so this is not. The, this is not the real world, real, real world. No, the, the, the inner world, our souls, that's the thing that kind of goes on forever. And that's the part that we have to figure out. And we don't have to be so hard on ourselves about it, too. I mean, um, one of the, the incredible, well, the most incredible experiences I had was um, right after I'm, I mean, I've written the, the these these books on uh, this book on on the shadow people and these alien beings in my first book called the secret war. Um, that is, um, it was just, it was so, uh, it was really difficult for me. I, like, Oh my gosh, all these things are, are going on. People have no idea. I had to keep this to myself until this book was written. And I took great pride picking on my friends, mind you, that went to church on Sundays. I mean, I believed in God and all this stuff, and I did my prayers every once in a while, but I didn't really put it on high, on a high priority. And lo and behold, one day, <laughs> I have a Jesus encounter. And I don't even know how to say to people to say, like, oh, my goodness, you think these demons are real. You think these aliens are real? Jesus is so real, and he's so aware, and he is so on this stuff. 
I, I mean, I stutter in my mind even thinking how to express the love that comes off from him and the concern of what's happening in the world today with these demonic things. So, um, so I, 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 that's my book, uh, Jesus is no joke where I wrote about those encounters and I had criticized people who claimed to have seen Jesus, mind you, in my first book, the secret war. And just before I put it out, it's when he showed up and I had to rewrite that whole chapter and said, why I said, Jesus stopped by and, <laughs> I got to fix this chapter. I <laughs> just like I had to be honest about it. So you're so lighthearted about, you know, very serious conversations here. I hear that with from people like, "Oh, it's hard to take that serious." It's like, "Well, should I put a freaking flashlight under my chin so people to take me serious?" You know what? You know, I I think that's putting us in that weird category like you got to talk really quiet in order to, you know, it's like I think that's what scares people and clears out a room. I, I know how to clear out a room. I know how to scare the crap out of people. But, again, I'm someone who was raised in a haunted house. I went through a lot of stuff. I suffered greatly. I had nightmares about Freddy Krueger, <laughs> you know. And it's like uh, I got sick of being fearful. I got sick of being told, oh, don't talk about that around us, you know. So I, I learned a way to talk about this stuff as I would talk about anything else, because that's the way we need to be. It's an everyday thing. It's not paranormal. This is freaking normal. And people just need to get over it. Um, it's like, yeah, have a sense of humor. Because one thing that ticks Hatman off is laughing at him. He laughs at people, by the way. He loves to do that to people. Well, I like to laugh back because uh, I, I got the I got the 411 on him, and I'm willing to share. And he's not happy about it, but uh, I don't know. Um, you know, having people who have experienced him uh, one time in their life 40 years ago that's ruined their life from that point on, or people who have experienced him regularly for 40 years, the fear seems to be nearly equivalent that he will ever return again. That's That's how sinister of a presence this beast has. And I tell people, um, you have to protect your space first off. Because he's a coward. He's a low-down piece of crap. That's what I like to tell people. He likes to come like a thief in the night instead of come at you as you are, you know. But he will sometimes, of course, come at people in the day, daytime. But he generally likes to, to hide and sneak and, oh, they're sleeping. Oh, let me be the perv and come sneaking in and, and spying at you through the window. And like, oh, they're at their weakest moment. So what does that tell you? The, the human potential is something to be reckoned with. So you have more power than you think in having uh, the authority over his, <laughs> I don't even want to swear, but to have <laughs> authority over him. So uh, I tell people, bless your space, because he comes when you're really at your weakest moment. And sometimes he creates those weak moments. So if you're sick, if you're depressed, uh, if you drink, if you do drugs, uh, if you're um uh, mourning uh, somebody's uh, death, uh, he comes around those times. So I tell, uh, I have another book called The Hat Man, and it's done in comics, and it shows you how to bless your space so you can sleep at night without him coming at you. Now, um, one thing he will try to do after you bless your space is try to give you nightmares. So what you use to bless your space, I tell people to use a cross necklace and sleep with it. <laughs> I never take mine off because he really, he really hates me. So it's kind of, kind of a nice compliment, but um, yeah. So I tell people bless your space. Number one, um, if people come into your home that have him on them, you, you need to, probably bless it again because they could drag it on their shoes into your home. Um, but there comes a level of possession. He does possess people. He does cause the arguments. He does cause uh, the, the strife that people are going through, the sudden depression. Um, I, I had, uh, I, I, at times I have a radio show that I host. I'm on a hiatus right now, but uh, it's called the outlander show. And um, I've had uh People come on that program and share some of the things that, that they've personally experienced in regards to uh, um, protecting their home. And they thought that they did everything right. And, 
and it didn't it didn't go as planned and and it started all over again and i tell people i'm like you just you got to do it again and yes he'll come whispering in your ear yes he'll he'll try to steer you to doubt yourself um but i i had a lady come on my my show who was an author on uh near death experiences and and I was just like, you know, everything's love and light, fluffy lights and all this stuff. I'm like, okay, what about the people who report they had a dark experience? Their near-death experience was dark. She goes, well, the most interesting thing is <laughs> they see this man in a hat and suit. I said, oh, my God, it's the freaking hat man. I'm like, here we go again, you know. So you need to shake them now. And it's and you can. You can. If your parents put this on you, you just say, hey, hey, whatever, whatever stake you think you have in my soul it's done in jesus name be gone okay bye this is it and you just have to have no doubts in yourself and being able to do that and um and i also tell people if you go to bless your home i'm not talking about call a priest or a pastor he's coming into your house you have to stand on your faith so you and everybody else who lives in that home not everybody will do it you bless that home you get every corner you do this because that's who he's challenging, not your pastor five miles away, you know. So it doesn't work oftentimes when people do that. They're like, okay, the priest came, and boy, it didn't work. I'm like, did you join in the blessing? Well, no. Oh, well, <laughs> well, no wonder. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you've really got to put your ethereal foot up the backside of this evil crap uh, to make it be done. Can he possess you much uh, like the exorcist? Yes, he does. Yeah, uh, that those are one of his steps. Uh, it's like the worst one when it gets to that extent. And um, you need an exorcism to be done. You do. And um, you know what's really odd and strange? It, it, this paralysis. When you think about the sleep paralysis, hey, that's such bogus. Oh, sleep paralysis. It wears a hat and a suit, huh? <laughs> you know what the hell is that? That's such a oh, crock of crap of scientists trying to explain away something that's real. They're trying to put down a phenomenon that it, so people just ignore it. It's like, oh, then why does it work when they take a, a anti hallucinogenic medication that they don't see it anymore? I'm like, well, they're sleeping um, because the drugs knocked them out. You know, that makes them ignore a part of their soul. I don't know. Was an incantation put over the medicine? I don't know. But it's not, uh, I, as an occupational therapist, one of my specialties is working with people with schizophrenia. And God forbid they Google me because they're like, they're like, oh, my God, you know, the guys I have been seeing. They all talk of shadow people and hat man. Why is that? Why is that? I don't think it's a coincidence, and I, I think that there's something to be said about these people, that they may be extra gifted, and they can't handle it. I mean, would you handle it if everywhere you turned, you could see through the veil so darn clear? And they they hate that, so they're trying to possess you and talk to you and get you to do their bidding. So, yeah, you might look a little, little off kilter. <laughs> Other than sleep paralysis, which you discredit, are there any scientific explanations that you entertain any rational explanations excuse the term for the hat man phenomenon i really don't see how it could fit in with anything honestly i mean these things are rather consistent across many nations i've had thousands of reports from around the globe so um and this is before people really joined the bandwagon <laughs> with me and thinking, oh, I'm going to tell her what it is. Well, hey, you know, this is this is a phenomenon that uh, I've had my ear to for over 20 years now. And it's I, I don't think that there's a rational explanation for the devil in today's world. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it, it's something that people it, it's happening. You know, this there there's a reason why there's been whispers of a boogeyman. Uh, there's a reason why these movies have been discussing uh, a thing that comes at you at night or comes from the shadows or, you know, I think people have experienced these things for a long time, but you don't want to be looked at as being insane, you know, oh gosh, that's something those wacky, uh, wackadoodles talk about, you know. The monster in the closet, the beast under the bed. 
He loves closets, by the way. I say keep them closed at night, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, also, to keep a light on. Have some kind of a light to refer to. He doesn't like the light, but he'll walk into it. But he usually likes to get you when your guard is down and not able to see him as clearly. But he'll step out of the shadows, though, too. But still, anything that will deter him, I say use it. So light, um, use it wearing a, a cross necklace. And I've had people of different faiths and beliefs that have come to me, too. They're like, well, what do I do? I'm Muslim. I'm like, well, do you have a positive something that refers to God that you can use to bless your home and wear it or put it above your bed? And uh, and it's worked for them. So it's uh, it's about bringing in the light, bringing in God. And, um, you know, and people, I, I don't know what it is with people say, well, I'm spiritual. I'm not. I'm like, oh, my God. Are you Christian? Usually these people are like they call themselves recovering Catholics or something. I'm like, oh, my. Do you believe in Jesus? Oh, OK, then let's just say you're Christian. Let's just go there um, because you're talking to me about the devil. Why are we? Speaking like we're ashamed to say you, we're Christian. I'm Christian. This is what works. I'm not kidding. And it works uh, in the face of so-called aliens, too, that hate the name of Jesus. What is that? I mean, what is that? And, and, and it's important to note, too, the beings that uh, were speaking to my college roommate, they said that Jesus is who he said he was, that he is the son of God. What Was this an alien being that really was talking through my friend? It, I don't know. You know, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think it would fall into that category. But there is one God in the universe per these these beings. Um, and they did not like seeing what was going on down here and that human beings disregard their souls. So if we're disregarding our souls and these different dark beings see nothing but our souls, who has the upper hand? It's scary. Does the hat man have a definable image, or is it always changing? Could he be photographed? He has been, um, but again, who's to say? Everybody thinks everything's a hoax. Um, and, and I don't know if grabbing a camera is the first instinct that you would have. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, people sleep with their cell phones, so when they when they see something, they'll snap a picture, um, <laughs> and I've gotten some really good ones that are really just simply amazing, but, um, you know, one of the things that I enjoy most are answering people's uh, questions and emails about this phenomena, so I really, I welcome people uh, to write me through HeidiHollis.com or... Um, Heidi Hollis at gmail.com, which is H E I D I H O L L I S. Um, because it, it's, it's so needed and so necessary that um, I, I feel honestly that I'm in a war against death because that's what he brings and that's what he's encouraging and that's what he's focused in on. Um, people think we're in the end times and locusts are <laughs> in the billions ruining. Uh, many countries of Africa right now, and we've got a plague that's going on. And it's like, well, you know, if the signs feel real, um, then where are we going with this? We've got to get on top of what we call our souls and what matters and stop being ashamed to say that you're Christian and uh, you believe in Jesus, you're, then go where? Go there. Just <laughs> Just be all about it because it's not a time to be uh, sitting on a fence of, of any kind because he's spotting these people out and he's hunting you. He's hunting the people. It's out of control. And um, Is the hat man like a, an incubus? He is. Yeah, he is. He's like an incubus. And tales of that have been, what, since the Gilgamesh? Oh, uh... it's, it's really, this is a part of the phenomena a lot of people don't like to discuss. Well, But he, he rapes. He rapes, uh, he bites, he scratches, he attacks, but he he's very rapey, unfortunately. And um, it doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter the age. And and he encourages suicide. I, I've got a couple of stories about that. That's so disturbing. It's just so disturbing. I, uh, and it's and it repeats. It repeats itself. So uh, people that have attempted suicide, knowingly attempted suicide, and they wake up and they're in the hospital and their arms are strapped down and and they have a visitor. He's sitting in the chair waiting and comes. And I've had like verbatim 
him coming really close to their face and saying, you know, having their, his fingers in a, in a pinch of an inch, I was this close to having you, and disappears. Um, as a therapist, I, I had a student who was, uh, I was supervising, and my goodness, she learned about my, my, my extracurricular uh, activities, and she's like, what do you cover? I said, oh, this guy, hat man, shadow people. And she gives me this story, and she's like, oh, my God. She's like, I was three years old. I don't know how people remember this young, but she said, I was three years old. I looked, I saw a um, power outlet. She said, there was a fork on the floor next to it. I looked at the fork. I looked at the outlet and I'm thinking to stick this thing in, you know, and she's like, and all of a sudden, poof, here's this guy is so tall. He's hunched over. His back is touching the wall, the ceiling. And he bends all the way down to my face within mere inches. And he looks at the fork and he looks at the outlet and he goes, go ahead, stick it in. And he disappeared. He encouraged a three-year-old to kill herself. And, and had she listened, is she now a part of his army? I mean, it's disgusting. It's disturbing. Um, sorry I don't have a flashlight under my chin to say this, but I think that people get the impact. And, um, you know, in all honesty, I don't know how I could handle some of the horrific cases that come my way had I not. Uh, kept it at the level that I do. I would be highly depressed and, and cowering in a corner. So, um, yeah, it, it's um, it's overwhelming. Does it not get a bit too much, though, at times? I, I cry a lot reading emails. I cry a lot. And and it just it gives me the courage even more so to step forward and, and go after this beast because I, 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 I get so enraged uh, over the topic. I get very, very angry. I'm very upset. And uh, it just really it puts the fire under me to just be like, and this is this is his his days are numbered. I'm I'm determined, and it, it sounds so strange, but I feel like it's a war against death. I I don't know how better to take this thing on, but to go to each person and say, do this, do that, arm yourself. Don't let him keep coming night after night, week after week. Don't doubt yourself that you can't. I know that fear. I've seen some horrific things myself, face to face. First shadow person that came at me, I had to walk through him. He was blocking my way out of a door. It was horrible. I'm like, <laughs> and 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 giant shadow spiders just terrorized me for years. I mean, huge. That would take up my whole ceiling. So I've dealt with this stuff. I've I've seen ghostly things uh, since I was eight years old. Eight years old. So, yeah, I I, I found the, the courage, and um, you know, my I do everything that I do because I had the Jesus encounters that I did, and um, I cheated in my faith because he had to show up and practically smack me upside the head to wake me up to say I'm the one that's going to help you get through this. But I'm here. I'm there. I did it. Um, but. Every time that uh, I take a step forward in this, I, I throw the shield of him in front of me before anything because I, I couldn't handle it alone. It's it's a lot. And these demons would rip me from limb to limb, to be honest. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Holly. Yes. Um, so I just called you Holly. Uh, Everybody hi. does that. It's okay. Really? <laughs> yeah, yes, the they Hollis do. Thing. Jeez. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> no, I really appreciate you having me on. It was way overdue, and uh, definitely do it again. Got a lot of topics to cover and to give the right message out there. I I'm trying to figure out which button to hit to really smack the impact of this uh, going on out there in the world, so I appreciate the opportunity. Are you going to write more about the hat man, or yes. have you said you're going you're gonna to do more? Oh, gosh, I, I have to. It's there's so much going on and it's just growing. It's not getting any better. So I'm like, I don't know what I have to do to shake people up that it's coming. It's happening. It's threatening. So, um, you know, people get back to your faith. Uh, don't be so hard on yourselves. And I understand the church has done some wrong, but why were we focused on the, the people that are directing the church versus God? Uh, that's a problem. So look to the real thing that too and, and and deity god that you're supposed to be pointing all your efforts to so 
um, I, I think that's uh, we just got to get back to it and, and we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. I, I have faith in that. I really do. So, Heidi Hollis, thank you so much for being a guest on the program today. Thank you so much, Russell. This is great.